Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and something a little bit different uh, today. Uh, this is a particular shout out to Luca and to Linda who are both people who got ripped off their last uh, mentor session. So this is for you but obviously for anyone else who is looking at some just different ideas for preparations for your upcoming trials and I know that they aren't upcoming but they're still a couple of weeks away yet. Um, but the whole, post, uh, the whole purpose of preparation is to make sure that you are ready um, and that you found some tools that are going to be really useful to you in organizing your ideas, uh, making sure that all of your notes are good to go. And of course, more than anything else, making sure that you've had an opportunity to practice questions, get a really good feel for the sort of things that you're going to need to be asked to do and how you can help to keep those things in your mind. So this is a different kind of video today and hopefully there'll be a few little tips in here that you can take away. So let's have a look. So <clears throat> what I want to do is just to overview a couple of tools. This is obviously not an exhaustive list, but just a couple of tools that might help to shift your study towards high yields. That is ways where you can actually um, make the most of the time that you have, learn something new each time you sit down and have some really concrete, productive study tool that you can use to help you prepare, not just for your chemistry exam, but for any of the other exams that you've got coming up. So we'll be looking at five different study techniques. These are quite useful techniques. None of them are particularly earth shattering, um, but they're all really useful. Uh, I wouldn't probably try and use all five of these systems. I'd try and pick whichever one of these you felt was going to be most useful to you and then focus in on that particular one so that you've got a really clear idea of uh, exactly what it is that's going to work for you. If at this stage you're still not sure which systems are best for you, then play around with some of these systems until you get a bit of an idea about the best things um, that you can use. So let's have a look at the first one, which are the outcome cards. The purpose of outcome cards, and I, um, I guess the old syllabus used to refer to these as dot points, and I'm really trying to avoid using that term because it becomes uh, something which just diminishes what chemistry is all about. Chemistry is a really uh, intricate jigsaw of all sorts of different interconnected concepts and the more concepts you have the bigger the picture or the clearer the picture that you can make and therefore hopefully the more useful um, each new piece of information is because it fits into something that you already have an understanding of. Of course um, when you're first learning chemistry you don't have a lot of these connections you don't have much of the big picture and it can be very very difficult. The student outcome cards or the learning outcomes are the ones that you've got to focus on because they tell you exactly what it is that you need to learn. And so therefore, these are a really good way to do a kind of a quick, uh, fast check of what you do know and what you don't know. Use these cards to um, put them into piles of know that well, don't know that at all, know that moderately well. So you can keep coming back, reinforcing your knowledge, being clear that if any of these uh, comes up as a question that you would know exactly how you were going to answer it. So the outcome cards look like this. This is the whole series for chemistry. You can see that there are um, different colors for the four different modules. Um, I haven't set the templates up um, uh, to share these with you yet. Most of you guys should have um, the first two topics, so the equilibrium acid reactions and also acid base reactions. So that's the blue one and the green one. The yellow one is our organic and the red one is the applying chemical ideas, which is the last topic that we'll be looking at in this course. You can see that there's lots and lots of different um, bits of information here, but this is the entire course sitting in front of you. So hopefully it doesn't look too daunting. There's obviously a lot of stuff to remember, but a lot of this is already in your head now. So it's just about making sure that you can focus in on exactly what it is that you think you want to use. Now, you might find this a little bit difficult to read, so let's blow one of these two uh, up. And this is what they look like when we blow them up a little bit. So in equilibrium and acid reactions, you can see one of the things that we have to do is investigate the use of solubility equilibria by Torres, uh, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander peoples when removing toxicity from foods, for example, toxins in cycad fruit. Now, because that's specifically listed as one of our learning outcomes, it could be reworked into a, into a question so that you might have to write about this. And that's what the benefit of these cards is. It's all about focusing in on the 
the specific information that you need. Of course, if you pick up a card and it says provide examples of common nomenclature for common inorganic acids and you don't know what that means, well then you put that to one side and you think, okay, what's common nomenclature? Nomenclature is a word we've used a couple of times in chemistry, which is about naming things. So what are some of the common inorganic acids that I might need to name? And of course now we've had a look at organic acids as well as inorganic acids and it gives us a really good um, understanding of the different types of acids and how we go about naming each of these. So expand these cards out. Um, what I usually do with them is print them um, and then laminate them and cut them out so you've got a little set of cards that you can actually use. I know what some students like to do is to actually write on the back of the cards before you um, laminate them so that they have some little hints or tips or diagrams on the back that just means you can flip them over if you're not quite sure um, what a particular learning outcome is is getting at. So these are the outcomes cards. Um, uh, the templates will be available um, on the uh, Canvas site and hopefully um, you'll be able to use these in a way that's going to be most useful to you. The second uh, technique are Cornell notes and you may have used these before but these are really the I statements that really matter. This is a way of organizing your uh, note taking. So hopefully what you can see here is this letter I that um, is kind of off square and from this letter I we um, have a page that's split into four regions. Now, this can be a useful technique when you're taking notes from videos, and they don't have to be these videos, they can be any videos. Uh, when you're looking through your textbook, when you've picked up an outcome card and aren't sure exactly what it's getting at, and you know you need one extra set of notes on that, this can give you a good idea of how to use this. So you can see what we do at the top is we put our title, um, we put who's written the notes, so that's always useful, particularly if you're sharing these. And of course, there's no reason why you can't share your notes and work collaboratively when you are um, doing your study. Often getting different perspectives and talking through your understanding of different concepts can really help to set them in your own head. It's probably important that you put a date. The date's useful if you want to review the notes at some point in the future or if you know you've made more than one so you can see how your notes are progressing or how you're kind of trimming them back. Over on the left here are really the key ideas. They're the statements that we really want to make sure that we have um, so that there's kind of a bit of a cut to the chase section over here on the left. And opposite each of these, we want to make sure that we've got so, some expanded notes. Sometimes um, a diagram over here is useful. And of course, I've done this all on uh, an electronic format, but you could handwrite these as well. It depends how you want to set these out. This one's focused on organic nomenclature. So um, what I want to do is identify my functional groups so I can kind of do that here. Um, I can count my carbons, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and identify any side branches. So that means this one over here is a side branch. And I've also got a couple of halogens that are coming off as well. And so you can see as I build this picture up slowly, I get um, a consistency in the terms of how I go about naming my organic compounds and hopefully leads me to a nice if um, complicated name um, for the compound that I've been given. It's useful to put uh, at the bottom a nice little summary which you can come back to. Maybe you can gather some of these summaries together um, and perhaps um, you might make them a little bit more specific than that. Obviously um, I've given you this as an example so I wouldn't necessarily use it perfectly as it is, uh, although you could take it and make some modifications. But it's really important that you make these notes yourselves. It's important that you um, sit down and really get to grips with this stuff yourself. The more you wrestle with it, the more you make it an intellectual uh, exercise and, and really work your brain the same way you would work your muscles if you were uh, working out in the gym, the more um, your brain will get used to these sorts of exercises and the more comfortable it will be doing them. So a variation on the Cornell notes is the two column notes and I kind of like this one um, too because I think it's a little bit simpler to use. It's a kind of, uh, I think the Cornell notes are a more organized way of keeping notes. The two column notes you can kind of 
used for entire modules or at least say an inquiry question within a module and just have these notes sitting down the, the length of your page. So the two column notes kind of look like this. So the first column is the one where we would have the questions. So this would be say to go back to equilibrium somewhere where we would look at a couple of the key questions that are part of say that inquiry question around what factors affect equilibrium and how and we might look at things like Le Chatelier's principle, we might look at the factors that affect equilibrium systems and how we put these two things together uh, in order to analyze equilibrium systems. So, um, so firstly, um, if you've got a question on one side, then on the other side you want a statement. And, and as we did with Cornell Notes, you can also use diagrams here, um, uh, pictures which are structural formulae, either condensed or extended structural formulae. Uh, in order to demonstrate different things, particularly around organic chemistry. Um, or you can even use an example of an equilibrium system. So, for example, if I wanted to look at the Haber process, uh, which is hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas uh, in equilibrium with ammonia. And, of course, then I would need to make sure that I had my equation balanced. And then I could start looking at, okay, what's the delta H value here? Is it positive or negative? What happens if I increase temperature? What happens if I decrease temperature? Is there going to be an effect for pressure? And so on. So sometimes examples in these sort of spaces can actually help you to draw the threads of some different ideas together. Our fourth tool are the hexagons. The hexagons are a bit of fun. Um, the hexagons are really a good visual way of um, linking things together. So here's a little example with titration and of course a nice thing if you're doing this electronically is you've got tools where you can just simply create hexagons and you can move them together so that they start to um, link together really nicely. <coughs> of course if you have your main idea sitting in the center like titration then you can look at the different types of titration such as a strong acid versus a strong base if we were to titrate a strong acid against a strong base what sort of indicator might we choose and how would we justify the choice of that indicator uh, why are we doing that well of course we want to do that to um, identify an unknown concentration so if we're going to do that the assumption that we would be is we would have standardized one of our substances in the first place or one of our solutions so maybe we would have standardized the acid so that we can then titrate against the base or vice versa the apparatus is very important when we're carrying out a titration okay there are some specialized pieces of equipment so of course we we might even add an extra hexagon or two just to sort of expand that idea of apparatus and think okay what is the specific apparatus well uh, pipette and burette are part of it. Um, what are the associated practices that we need to observe when we're using a pipette and a burette? How do we maintain that level of accuracy that's very important? And of course that um, works into technique as well. Are we going to repeat it? How often are we going to repeat it? What margin of error are we going to allow in our result? That is, what sort of range of values for, for volumes are you going to be look at when you're carrying out your titration? So hexagons are a nice little visual tool for looking at one concept and looking at how many different things are going to interlock or link with that particular concept. And of course, you can build these hexagons up to being as big as you like or as small as you like. The final tool that I just want to look at is the structured overview. And this is just, I guess, Yes, um, same sort of thing as the hexagons are trying to get at or as mind mapping does which is a visual tool that consolidates all the learning this one I've actually left blank and part of the reason I've left this blank is because it's really important at some point that you actually start to just put something down in the middle of a page and see what it is that you can remember so if I am going to start from the module on organic chemistry, then I might be wanting to try and remember what were the aspects of organic chemistry that I had to look at. Well, I know I had to look at nomenclature or naming rules. And that was one of the first things that I needed to do. And after that, I looked at the hydrocarbons. And when I was looking at the hydrocarbons, I can remember that there were three main groups that I wanted to look at. So they were the alkanes, the alkenes, 
and the alkynes. I remember that these two are unsaturated and they're also um, less chemically stable, they're more reactive because of the presence of the double or triple bonds that we find. Um, I also wanted to have a look at some of the reactions involving the hydrocarbons and of course one of the important ones was a distinguishing uh, reaction to tell the difference between the saturated and unsaturated which was our bromine water test which I can add in here as well and as I keep going um, I might want to add something on alcohols um, as one of my other groups and what I remember from that which might be reactions uh, which might be production, fermentation, uh, it might be um, molar, heat of combustion, uh, it might be oxidation and so on. So there's lots and lots of things and this is the way that a structured overview works. It just grows and grows with the more information that you have. One bit of fun that you can do and particularly if you've got a study buddy is you can both start uh, developing one of these or maybe even developing two different modules and then swap them as you each look at what the other's written it'll trigger some memories for you and maybe you'll also find you can add to it to help these things to grow and help them to be really um, as complete as you can get them as you move on. The actual final structure doesn't really matter. Um, you may realize later on that you forgot to include things like polymers um, and so you might want to add those in as well. This is the purpose of our study, is to help us identify what we know and to move from what we know to what we don't know. And so therefore, each time you sit down to study, if you've identified something that you're not strong in or you're not sure of, and you can answer some specific questions, watch a video, read a section of a textbook, do something that helps you focus your attention on specifically that thing that you felt you were struggling with until you've managed to sort of sort it out a little bit, get it clearer in your head. That is a really valuable use of your study time. So to Luca, to Linda and everyone else, good luck in your preparation for your trials. The Holidays are a time where you do want to make sure you get a bit of a break, but also start that preparation because um, once we return in term three, we've got an awful lot of um, uh, material that we still want to keep working through, but we also want to make sure that we're really on that road to preparation for your um, trial HSCs. Good luck. Um, let me know if there's any other techniques that you find that are really useful for you, and we can um, share some of those at some point too. And thanks for watching.